Hi, my name is Chris Blunts. I'm a specialist dyslexia teacher from Help for Dyslexia. And this is Izzy. Um, it may come as no surprise to you that Izzy isn't a specialist dyslexia teacher, but however, she's highly delighted about the change that's happened over the pande pandemic period with my teaching because I've gone completely online now, on Zoom, and I'm teaching anywhere in the world. So she now accompanies me occasionally to California, uh, North Carolina, Bahrain, and even various places around the UK. So it's um, she's really high, highly delighted about what's happened. It means that she's not cooped up in the kitchen in her little cage during the teaching times, and the children absolutely love it. So I'm just going to pop her down now, because that's the introduction period over. And uh, there you go, Izzy. Right. The purpose of this video is to actually introduce you to my mnemonics and phonics teaching programme represented on that little little memory stick. It's amazing what can be locked on a memory stick because there's masses of stuff on here. So I've been using this teaching programme for well over 25 years with my pupils and it's had some phenomenal effects, really great effects. It's fast, it's effective, it's fun to do um, and more to the point it's really simple to actually administer. In fact somebody who's bought it recently said that it was so simple to use that it's actually just like doing a, a recipe, following a recipe. It's very very simple to do. So if by any chance you're a teacher who is struggling at the moment with dyslexic pupils in your class who are not making much progress on the phonic programs that you've got in school or if you're a parent who's aware, again, of the similar thing, that your children are just not making the kind of progress that you want them to make, then listen in here, because this method could well be the solution to your problem. It's a little bit strange how the misguided impression that if you've got a dyslexic child who's struggling at school on the phonics programmes there, that the way to teach them is to give them more of the same slowed down. That doesn't really work very well. Um, they have to be given English in a totally different way. Um, and I, that's probably where I think my, my methods actually work best from, because they are multi-sensory. They actually pre present the information in a completely different way. Um, and it's very, very effective and it, it's very memorable. You probably know me more, many people might know me more, from my books that have been selling online. They've been on the go now for several years and they've been selling at helpfordyslexia.co.uk um, and whatever's on these is also on here but considerably more, masses more information on here. So I thought that this is perhaps the best time to promote this because there are hundreds of people who are trying to do homeschooling. And, and if you've got a dyslexic child and you're trying to homeschool, um, it's not all that easy to do. And this would be an ideal opportunity to actually focus in on these particular methods that I've got here. Because honestly, within a matter of weeks, you could notice a difference. Because time and time again, parents have said to me, I don't understand this. My child has been at school for X number of years and have made hardly any progress at all on the phonics programmes that are there and yet within a matter of weeks I can see a difference here. So just imagine I only ever see my pupils for one hour a week and stretched over a whole year that actually only really amounts to 40 hours and that's about a day and a half and the progress that they actually make in a day and a half admittedly you know we've got doing the bits of practice in between time Imagine if you were doing this on a daily basis for an extended period of time, like a few weeks. Your child could actually go back to school infinitely better at reading and spelling and greatly more confident. And this, of course, impacts all the other subjects in the school. So what I thought I would do is I would just quickly summarise what's on here. Um, and then for those of you who want to hang on to the end, um, you can see it in a, a little bit more detail. So locked in here, you've got my mnemonics course um, in a lot more detail than is presented in the books. 
and you've also quite a big extensive phonics section as well with, with masses of worksheets. So the mnemonic section has got 11 different listings of words, um, things like you know the first 100 words or the next 200 words or years one and two, the usual listings that teachers tend to work from. Um, there's also a listing of 180 homophones and for each listing there is um, a mnemonic chant for every single word on, on the list. And as well as that, there are hundreds of sentences where those words have been woven together to give um, sentences which allow for a lot of practice for reading and for spelling. So all in all, in the mnemonic section, there are actually nearly a thousand worksheets, um, mainly sentences, to give practice for reading and for spelling. The phonics section is not actually my invention. The phonics section is actually the Orton Gilliam flashcard method, which I was trained in, but I don't actually use it in the same way that I was trained by. Um, and also all of the worksheets were my invention or are my invention. And likewise, within that section, there are getting on for about a thousand worksheets as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge section. And alongside that, there are also templates for um, helping the pupils to actually monitor their own progress. So things like um, graphs for monitoring the speed that they're doing the work at, um, or um, little thermometers for actually showing the progress that they're making in terms of the percentage gains and improvements. So in this section, there are five packs. We've got the alphabet pack, the consonant blend pack, the long vowel pack, the prefix pack, and the suffix pack. Um, and all together, this whole section in that little memory stick, is, it's a really powerful teaching method that really does work. I mean, this is not sales hype, it, it really does work. Time and time again, I've heard parents say the same thing. I can't believe the difference that this has made. Um, and I know that over the years, many of my pupils have gone on to achieve great things um, and have gone on to have fantastic careers. So if you need to contact me, or you need to order anything that you would fancy buying, um, there it's my work, it's my website, which is www.helpfordyslexia.co.uk. If you want to contact me, um, my email address is helpfordyslexia at gmail.com. Um, and I'm also on Facebook under Help for Dyslexia as well. So if anybody wants to message me or, or, or even FaceTime me, I'm quite happy to, to chat to anybody who wants to know a little bit more about this. So that's the summary. If you want to hang around now, I'll show you some of the worksheets and show you how relatively easy this whole method is actually to teach. So if we start with the mnemonic section, you would always begin by finding one of those word listings, whichever is appropriate to your child. I'm just going to show you this as an example. This is the um, first 100 words. And the very first thing that you would do there would be to give your child a spelling test. And any of the ones that they get wrong, you actually mark down because they're the ones that you're going to be targeting with mnemonic chants. Now, the first thing that you do is you get the percentage of their score um, and there are there's a little template in here this thermometer is is hugely popular because if you equate temperature with success and progress um, if you're not very good at something you'll be down in the cold blue area but as you practice a lot more you actually get warmer and warmer um, and you end up by getting really hot at the top so heat is uh, equating with them um, with success um, so if you imagine somebody starts a spelling test perhaps and they've got a thermometer that looks a bit like that and then you're going to work on all of the ones that they've spelt incorrectly um, by using these chants which I'll explain in a second and then having succeeded at practicing these you might end up by having a thermometer uh, over time that will look like this and this is a huge confidence boost to any child who uh, actually likes to see their own progress. So after you've done the spelling test and you've worked out which ones are wrong, you then locate the list of chants and you find the chants that are appropriate to the ones that your child has got wrong. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. This is the way that I do it. I actually cut card like this 
and I'll show you another one actually because that's a homophone. Um, cut card like this and then the chant, whichever, whatever it happens to be. In this case it's White Houses in the East and notice that with my chants the chant always begins with the, car the, the word that's on the front, the word that you're targeting, so it makes it hugely more powerful in the memory. So you, you maybe tell a little story about this particular chant, activate the visual memory, draw a little appropriate picture, um, and then you say the chant out loud numerous times, maybe ten or more out loud, and then lo and behold that chant st sticks in the memory, and once a chant is learned and is committed to the memory, that means that word can now be spelt. So we've got a couple of examples here, you know, white houses in the east, um, that's one of the high frequency words, and then when, when Henry eats nuts, <laughs> So these are great opportunities to tell little stories and they're very popular. The homophones, this is great for homophones because um, as I've been making up all these thousands of chants, um, for homophones you have to not only work out what the chant is in, uh, suitable for the order of the letters obviously in the word, but I try to lock in the meaning of the word as well. So here's a couple of examples of two homophones. Um, the top one, saw, which is to do with some kind of injury. And the bottom one, um, saw meaning the flight of a bird. So the top one, saw on rabbit's ear. So there we've got a little picture of a rabbit with an injury on its ear. Um, and then here, saw over abbey roof. So highly multi-sensory this method of mine is, and it's very, very visual and lots of drawing and lots of colouring in and lots of storytelling. And it really lifts words to life and, and takes them from being kind of boring, learning ordinary spelling by look, cover, write and say, which doesn't often work very well, um, into something a lot more exciting. Now if you didn't want to do this method using the um, strips of card, there is um, a template in here for doing it in a slightly different way, and that is the words that you get wrong, you write them down, you write the chant in the middle, and then the pupil gets an opportunity to do their own little drawings at the side. Same sort of thing, say the word out loud, say the chant out loud rather, numerous times and the combination of the visual memory of drawing the picture and the auditory memory of saying the chant out loud locks the information into your long-term memory and it lasts a long time. Now, as you're actually accumulating chants and words in this particular way, I always think it's a good idea to actually um, keep track of all of this. So there's a template in here, a graph that you can actually adapt and this one would be um, showing the numbers of chants that you're accumulating over any one time so that's quite useful to see that monitors their own progress then by the time you've actually got a really you know good pack on the go the next thing would be to actually get the stopwatch out and start timing them um, and this is the kind of thing that i like to see because here you know you're starting off taking quite a long time and then gradually with practice you're getting quicker and quicker and every time you actually get quicker and quicker and there are fewer hesitations in the brain, you're actually doing important stuff in the brain by embedding the information into the long-term memory. Here is a star which represents that this particular pupil has actually got faster than me doing their pack of chants and always again that's a fantastic thing for a child to actually <laughs> be able to achieve. Um, when you've reached the target of having um, done all the words that you need on a particular uh, list, uh, like the first hundred words, then there is a template on here as a certificate, and I always like to give certificates at perhaps 50, uh, 100, 150, that kind of thing. And here's a recent little certificate done by one of my pupils just a few days ago, really. She's only had about 12 lessons with me, um, and she's actually achieved a, a 100 certificate. So again, that's so exciting when you get to that stage. You can get 100 words, 100 words you can now spell that you couldn't spell, and then here is the opportunity to start putting what you've practiced into practice, and that is words, sentences, where you can actually spot your um, mnemonic words running through all these sentences. It gives a wonderful opportunity to practice reading and of course these can be given back as dictations so that you practice them in spelling as well. So there's masses of these, I mean literally there are thousands, <laughs> well up to up to a thousand anyway of, of those um, sheets. And then also there are uh, little word searches, I love word searches actually because 
usually people enjoy doing them anyway, but it's a great way of training the brain to spot, to see where a word begins and where a word ends. So really, in a sense, you're doing spelling, but in a slightly more enjoyable kind of way. So that's the mnemonic section. Now, the phonics section, as we said, there, there's five packs. The alphabet pack, the consonant blend pack, long vowels, prefixes, and suffixes. Now, the way these are actually tackled is very, very similar. The format to teaching um, within, a, within a pack is very similar. So I'm going to home in on the consonant blend pack because it's a nice easy one to talk about. So if you're going to do consonant blends, the first thing that you would do, you would locate the templates for the consonant blend flashcards, the um, back-to-back -back ones, and you would print these out. Um, these are all colour coordinated, so it's always a good idea to have access to, say, a coloured card that you could print these out on, because um, I find that very helpful to have a, a colour coordinated system, and it, it certainly helps helps the pupils. So you locate the, the templates, cut the card out and you know have your pack ready um, and then you would go through them and one by one you would actually hold the cards up and I've got a few cards here I can show you. Hold the cards up and if a pupil um, says them correctly um, then they go into one pile. If they say them incorrectly they go into a, another pile. And so that would then give you your percentage. So then out comes the thermometer again. Um, so you work out your starting percentage. And all of the ones that they've got wrong, you then locate on the back the keywords. Now each card is designed in the same sort of way. You've got the phonics at the front, lowercase, capital. And then on the back, you've got a keyword that contains, in this case, kuru, the consonant blend kuru. So you draw a picture of the keyword, which is crab in this case, and then you would say this out loud several times, crab, cur, crab, cur, crab, cur, and that lo locks the sound attached to the keyword. So you would build up a whole pile of the ones that you've got wrong, again, nk, as in tank, so that would be tank, nk, um, spur, as in spring, spring, spur, um, ulf, as in dolphin, ulf, so you would say these with the keywords for a while, over and over again, um, until eventually they can then actually you can hold the card up and they can say the blend by itself without accessing the keyword because the keyword by now has done its work in the brain. So you then end up by practicing the X pack with the keywords and then eventually once they can be learned, they can be pushed across and the whole of the tick pack is then one unit, which again, you then start timing um, and getting faster and faster and faster um, and that's in a more you know that's really helpful because you're getting flashed into the brain all of these parts of words and they, you then start becoming familiar with them so again there's an alternative method if you weren't keen on having flashcards I mean this is the flashcard is what I always use but I can understand if you're in a teaching situation with a class of lots of children and you haven't got time for flashcards again with a, uh, a template system so here you would have a list of the consonant blends and you would hear them say this list, um, put marks next to the ones that they couldn't do and then likewise um, get a template whereby you would put all the ones they couldn't do down, put the keyword in the middle and then again once again drawing the pictures of the keywords. Very important to have this visual aspect of it because all of this is ultimately multi-sensory. So you work away on these, you actually build up your um, the stack of them, you get them really fast, hopefully all in one pack so that they're now all working one after the other really quickly, very familiar with them, and then loads and loads of word sheets, so masses of words. Um, notice that um, the green pen has come out and, and because it's a green pack you then underline the consonant blends in green and then you've got plenty of practice of being able to read all of these words back one after the other. And there's loads and loads of these sheets of words, these word banks. Likewise, um, bigger words, because obviously consonant blends aren't just in small words, so if you get a chance to show them some bigger words, then there's the opportunity to be able to spot them in the middles of words, not just at the ends and at the beginnings. And then again, you've got masses of sentences to analyse. And here we've got the green pens come out and running along and picking out all the consonant blends in the sentences 
uh, and then reading them through and again done back as a spelling, a spelling exercise. Um, other types of worksheets in this section, you've got um, heart, missing gaps where you actually fill in the appropriate consonant blend to make appropriate words. You've got um, anagrams where the letters are all mixed up and they've got to search for the, the hidden word in those. It's always a good test on that. And then again, once again, masses more sentences for reading and for spelling. And again, word searches. So it's really, it's just a step-by-step -step approach to, to everything, really. Everything that you give them, you're giving them the things that they can actually do, and then you go to the next step, and they can build on it step by step. It's like a ladder of success, really. And so when you've gone through all of the packs, working through them in this particular way, you can end up by, this is a very crude mind, but this is an example of how you can get to the stage where you can look at a bigger word and spot all the pack knowledge running through that one particular word and can, like the word can be pulled out like on elastic and you can see all the building blocks and then it becomes less daunting because each little bit you're now familiar with and you can manage to then read that word or, or these these bigger words back so that's the um, phonics section and then at the end there is um, a great long um, <laughs> lesson plan really, a great long lesson plan, right through a whole year, um, 40 weeks, where week by week you're given the instructions of how to carry these whole, this whole teaching method out, plus the equipment that's needed. But also on the memory stick there are 20 videos, 10 of them are instructional videos right throughout all the various stages, and 10 of them are um, testimonial videos where people, parents, pupils have said how much this teaching method has actually meant to them and uh, what, what a difference it's made to their lives. So that's it really. If, you, um, if you're interested, then once again, um, website, helpfordyslexia.co.uk, email, helpfordyslexia at gmail.com. And again, if you want to speak to me on Facebook, FaceTime me, it's Help for Dyslexia there. But honestly, it's worth considering this because it does make an enormous difference to the children. It's a multi-sensory, easy approach um, with a bit of repetition. And I think that's what maybe is missing from some of the phonic systems in schools, because they go from one worksheet to the next, to the next, to the next, and there's no kind of consolidation. So I think that's probably where this method may work where others don't for this type of child. OK, thanks for listening.